So you are looking for the perfect gaming keyboard that combines great performance, premium build quality, and yet is still affordable? Well, you might just be in luck today as I'm about to review what I believe to be the most premium pre-built keyboard on the market. The keyboard I'm talking about is the Drunk Deer A75. You may or may not have heard of this keyboard. Drunk Deer is not only what they used to call my uncle, it is a relatively new keyboard company. Although they did send this keyboard out for me to review, trust me this is going to be a totally unbiased review. Now budget is subjective as this keyboard still does cost $130, but when compared to other keyboards similar to this one like the Wooting 60HE, which is the closest comparison, except it is 60% instead of 75%, and the A75 is $50 cheaper. Most custom keyboards are still a lot more, so I do consider this on the upper end of a budget keyboard still. Now it does have some downfalls which I will get into later, but the uptights for me overrided the downfalls. I didn't watch any videos before receiving this keyboard, so I didn't know what to expect when I opened the box. It comes with a user manual, some spare keycaps, a USB to USB-C cable, with an adapter that allows you to make it USB-C to USB-C, as this keyboard is meant for both Windows and Mac OS, and it also comes with a switch puller and of course the keyboard itself. I was instantly impressed by the all black look of this keyboard with a little hint of color in the red enter key and bluish purple left shift key. It also comes in a white or gray version which are equally as good looking or you can get it with no keycaps at all and save $10. The keycaps are unfortunately ABS plastic on this version, but for an extra $10 you can get it with PBT plastic. They still look clean though and are matte black. They do attract a lot of fingerprints, so I do wipe it off constantly to keep the nice clean look, and it is well worth it. This is a 75% keyboard, so it does have a very nice metal knob in the top right, like most others, to mute and control the volume without much effort. And this knob does seem to be a lot better quality than all of the other 75% keyboards I've used. The case is plastic as well, but it again matches the theme with a nice black, and the case does not attract fingerprints like the keycaps do. The keyboard is pretty light at 720 grams, or 1.587 pounds, which does make it feel slightly cheaper. They could have just added a weight inside on the back like the Phantom 81, or just put some rocks or something in it, anything to make it heavier, but it still doesn't feel cheap and is still great quality, it's just heavier keyboards tend to feel more premium. Under the board there is rubber feet to keep it from moving around, and height adjustable feet to raise the angle of the keyboard a bit, though I don't use those on hardly any keyboard. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you annihilate that like button and hit subscribe to get more videos like this. The biggest thing that shook me was when I plugged in the keyboard and just saw how bright the RGB lights were. The RGB is pretty close to the Razer Huntsman Minis with how bright they are, which I did not expect, although it doesn't have as much customization as the RGB on the Razer keyboards, as you can only cycle through 7 colors with function 2 and tab, and some effects with function 2 and left and right arrows. Still, it's insanely good quality RGBs if that's what you like in a keyboard. I usually keep them off because I like a more clean look, but for this keyboard, the matte black and keeping the RGBs on a static color looks amazing and still looks really clean. You can use the software it comes with to change the RGBs as well, which you don't really need, but the big reason I do use the software has to do with the switches. You're probably going to be asking like, what the f*** are you talking about the switches? Why the f*** would you use software for switches? It's not something you normally use software for. Well, like the Wooting, you can change the actuation point of the switches throughout the software from 0.4 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters, which is about the same size of something else. Uh, let's move on. As if you are gaming, you might want a quicker actuation like 0.4 millimeters, so you can press switches quickly. Or if you're typing, you might want a slightly longer actuation like 3.6 millimeters. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite actuation force. I know it's a weird question, but I kind of want to figure out what's the common actuation force for most of my viewers. I'm just kind of curious. You are supposed to be able to change it on the board with function 2 and the 1 through 9 keys as well, but mine doesn't seem to work, so I just use the software. I've seen other people say that it does work, so it might just be my keyboard. They can do this because they use magnetic switches instead of normal switches with metal contacts. They use a sensor and it can detect when it is cut off to actuate the switches, which allows it to be changed easily. Also, they are more durable than metal contact switches because they don't really have anything that can wear down over time. Again, it isn't the only keyboard to do this as the Wooting 60HE does this, but again, it does cost $50 more and is only a 60% keyboard, which isn't my favorite size as you don't get the arrow keys, the function row, or this nice metal knob. The switches are linear and really, really smooth, and the staplers are also pretty nice. They do come pre-looped and you can tell. The keyboard also does have foam between the case and PCB, and PCB and plate to make it sound and feel just a little bit better.
I do enjoy the sound very much, the only sound you can really hear is the sound hitting the plate. The only downfalls that make this a little less premium is the weight of the keyboard, the keycaps, which you can also upgrade for $10 or add your own afterwards, and some of the function keys on the board don't work for me, but that could be fixed later or even on your keyboard. To me, the pros of the adjustable actuation force, nice sound, smooth switches, overall look and build quality outweigh the few cons to make this one of the most premium budget pre-built keyboards I have ever used. But if you're still looking for a cheaper keyboard with a different look and the same or better build quality, go watch this review of the Skylon GK75 which costs around $50 US.